Manhattan, where he opened his own label and atelier. Um, after studying in Sardin in Sardinia, Milan, and the UK, he received a residency research award from Le Atelier de Paris and became the only Italian finalist of the Tokyo Fashion Grand Prix. He was also awarded the Who's Next Prize of Vogue Italia. He won two prizes at the Mittel Moda Interna International award, award in Gorizia, where he is now part of the jury panel. Silvio is sen Senior Portfolio of Fashion Design at Politecnico for FIT in Milan and Chair at Nuova Academia di Belli Arti. Since 2015, he is the creative head of Bioethical Sustainable Trends, BEST, in Cita del Arte, and since 2020, head of product and design development of the Italian brand Borbonese. Erika Moretti is an assistant professor of the Italian at FIT SUNY. She received a PhD in Italian studies from Brown University and a diploma in American studies from Smith College. Her research rooted in biopolitics, gender and sexuality studies and critical theory, focuses on pacifism, refugees and displacement and humanitarianism in modern Italy. Born in Italy, Lorenzo Piricino studied economics and Japanese at Reading University in England and Japan. After graduation, Lorenzo returned to Italy and started working in the world of fashion, traveling extensively around the world, holding positions in export management, marketing, retail operations, brand and product development. Lorenzo has worked for renowned fashion producers such as Ratti and Mitsubishi Fashion, as well as fashion and interior retail brands such as The Bridge, RCR, Signoria di Firenze and Devon and Devon. Since 2015, Lorenzo has been teaching fashion business management courses at FIT in Florence and more recently with Polimola, a fashion school in Florence. Um, I'm gonna now hand it over to Erika. She's gonna be reading a poem for all of you. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Erika Moretti. We will be reading a poem, but before I read a poem, if I can uh, uh, just... Uh, start talking about why I wanted to present in this panel and why I'm really excited to be here tonight. It connects to the poem and sort of like starts the conversation a little bit on how to connect uh, 27th Street to, uh, to Italy. Uh, can, you, uh, can everybody see the PowerPoint? Perfect, yes. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Well, thank you everybody uh, for being here today. Uh, thank you to the cultural fellows. It's uh, finally lovely to connect with you and uh, to uh, Professor Nigel and to uh, Dr. Godet for inviting me here to speak. Um, bridging Italy to 27th Street, as somebody who teaches uh, uh, in the Department of Modern Languages and Culture, it's, uh, you know, it's a lifelong mission. It's something that we try to do uh, and that I've been trying to do since before the pandemic. Um, I have to say that um, it's fairly easy when we teach in-person classes because uh, uh, you know, New York offers so much. It's possible to speak and read in Italian you know, on, a, on an hourly basis if you order a cappuccino at Starbucks, if you go to an Italian restaurant, or just if you go to any of the uh, tons of museums that uh, display Italian art. And it became a little bit more of a challenge when the pandemic started. But, you know, with the resourcefulness of the department and, you know, of the FID community, we've managed to bridge that gap uh, once again and remotely and to connect students to uh, Italy. The way we have been doing it, though, and this is the reason why I chose this poem, uh, it's, uh, it's to, find, to try to find ways that connect students not to sort of a stereotypical image of Italy, uh, to, you know, Italians as, you know, pasta eaters, uh, passionate lovers, or, you know, mandolin players, but, you know, to sort of like give to the student access to a complex and complicated and modern vision of the country that, you know, sort of like presents it from, uh, you know, from a multitude of perspectives that are, that are interesting, that are thought-provoking, and that have to do with, like, you know, an engaging way of, uh, of looking at this modern country. So for me, when we started talking with, uh, with my colleagues today uh, about a way to present Italy, that it's, uh, you know, it shows alternative routes to get to Italy in this moment of discomfort and this moment, these challenging times. You know, this is something that my department has been doing for so long that you know, it was an interesting challenge that was not new to me. 
And I think it also has to do with the uh, with one of the objective of the uh, uh, of the uh, of all the study and broad programs at FIT. I mean, the difference of uh, uh, residing in a country and getting to know its culture, and that of experiencing as a tourist who just goes by the country. Right, so you have on the one hand people who sort of do the uh, like a quick and dirty grand tour of Italy, Venice, Florence, and Rome, stop at the Prada outlet, and you know see the Colosseum, and instead you have those wonderful FIT programs where students can reside at length in the country and get to know the language, its people, and leave a positive mark on the hosting community, which is something that it's uh, it's it's so important to uh, to to the people who are teaching Italian language and culture. And there's sort of like the first contact with the language and the culture before students actually travel to Italy. And this is the reason, the reason why I've decided to um, choose a poem by a, uh, a living Italian poet, Antonella Nedda. Uh, she was born in Rome and uh, she's one of the most renowned Italian poets uh, uh, alive. Um, she was born in Rome in 1955. Her family is originally from Sardinia. And uh, the poem has to do with the, uh, a different vision of Sardinia from the one that many tourists have. It does portray a group of young women traveling through Sardinia. And when I was reading this, I thought of, uh, uh, you know, young FIT students traveling through Italy and exploring it. But it, show, it also shows the complexity of a land that has been exploited because of tourism, because of excessive tourism and, uh, uh, and you know, sort of like struggles with that. So I'm gonna be reading it in Italian and you can, be, you can follow it in English through uh, the presentation. 159 km da Mandas ad Arbatax, una vetrina con fiori di plastica, una iola con fiori veri, il cimitero alle porte dopo la piazza con la chiesa, il campanile medievale a strisce, bandiere per la festa, un vecchio su una panca di pietra. Non so farlo parlare, il silenzio è accurato, come dice Rocco nei suoi scritti, a chi gli domanda spiegazioni sulle tele. È meglio annotare, tre file di sugheri, senza corteccia, oleastri, ginepri. Una sequenza di paesi silenziosi, più silenziosi quando più il mare si allontana. Un grecce, un cane, una ruspa che scava, una macchina piena di ragazze sale sulle colline della Marmilla, che è il nome modificato di Mammella, è terra calva e gialla. La mia mente matematica cerca di calcolare l'età delle ragazze, l'altezza delle colline e quanto può impiegare una pietra a rotolare fino a colpire la seconda macchina che sale. La mia mente politica ricorda che a sud della costa occidentale si stendono i profitti di un impero, gente del fare, affare del dire e del comprare, mercanti da schiacciare invece che morte per fame, morte per malattia, fumo per i polmoni, acqua nera e cani, peste per sarrò senza conchiglia. La mia mente imparziale cerca di separare il reale dai reali. Il nostro passato è cresciuto, tanto da non poterlo offendere, né attraversare a piedi aereo o nave. So che non ha importanza se ci sbrighiamo a dimenticare. Le sequenze di desiderio, la pellicola in cui ci muoviamo, a scatti che si placano. Questo significa imparare a decifrare. Torno al paesaggio, alle ossa, delle bestie confuse con quelle dei sequestrati. Ricordo che a sud-est c'è un lago artificiale, Porta acqua e zanzare, nebbie verdi, non ci sono orti, ma pioppi, bianco metallo da ipnotizzare. Un gruppo di corvi circonda le rovine del Lazzareto, un altro volteggia sui detenuti della colonia penale. Mancano 70 km dalla costa, la vegetazione è diventata fitta, rami di bosco e spine fanno tac sui vetri. Cerco di ricordare un tuo gesto, ma non ho pazienza, so che se lo, so che se lo faccio mi colpisce il male. Il treno rallenta la luce, si apre il mare, appare uguale a sempre, ma utile per sempre a dimostrare come la pelle impallidisca, se si fenda e se si tiene troppo a lungo nel sale. Uh, so this is a poem that came out a few years ago. Anedda is a poet who explores the human condition. Uh, she, uh, in 2000, she won the... Um, Montale, the Eugenio Montale International Poetry Prize for a beautiful collection of essays. If you're interested, it's called uh, uh, Quiet Night in the Western Words, Notti di Pace Occidentale. Um, and uh, the reason I'm mentioning this collection is because she uh, compares the sort of like the feeling of, uh, of quietness and satisfactions and peacefulness that many people who live in the Western world experience 
without thinking about the sort of like the uh, injustices and uh, and uh, disparities that are at the foundation of many, West, of many Western societies. So once again, uh, the difference with what I think is, uh, uh, you know, deeply understanding one country because of uh, spending time in it, learning the language, learning the culture, learning about the culture, and sort of like glancing through uh, something quickly. Um, and uh, the uh, poem is uh, uh, set into, I mean, speaks about two cities, the cities of Mandas, uh, where the little circle, the uh, blue circle is in Sardinia, and uh, Arbatax, which you can see on the, on the sort of right side of the map of Sardinia here. Uh, so those two towns, one in the interland of Sardinia, which is rarely explored by tourists. And on the other hand, you have like the beautiful coast of Sardinia, which is instead flooded by, uh, by you know, people, by tourists. Uh, this is the uh, famous rock formation of the town of Arbatax, those red rocks that many tourists experience and see in the beautiful landscape of Sardinia. While the city of Mandas, more in the interland, is, uh, it's, uh, it's just, you know, rural and... Uh, uh, much less touched by tourism, uh, which leads me to uh, the way in which uh, my department and myself have been trying to bridge the gap between Italy and uh, 27th Street and now Italy and uh, our computers through our classes. And that has to do with the fact that um, many of the courses that we teach and uh, the way I personally teach is to try to present this vision of Italy that it's a uh, uh, a little bit less common. So we do have courses such as History of Italian Gastronomy, uh, which explores the history of Italian cuisine, but in any class we try to present in Italy that it's uh, complex, complicated, modern, and with the idiosyncrasies of uh, all the nations, so all the cultures that we know and love so much despite their own uh, issues and problems. And uh, uh, one of the most successful experiences in bridging uh, Italian culture to my students has been uh, uh, teaching through a um, uh, teaching a couple of classes. This was one unit in my class through this organization called uh, Nata Kallam. It's a, uh, an organization that provides uh, uh, both language instruction, which is not something that I expose my students to because that's what I'm there for, but also allows students to connect with, I mean, this, the organization allows students to connect with refugees who uh, are based in refugee camps throughout the Mediterranean. Uh, students can learn languages or they can learn um, the specific program that, oops, sorry, that I was working on uh, was connecting, uh, uh, it was called Global Voices. It was allowing students at FIT to get to know uh, the experience of being a, refuge, a refugee uh, in the Mediterranean uh, region. Uh, the class was called Mediterranean Crossing. It's centered on Italy as a land of uh, uh, immigration and immigration. Uh, it started with, it was a modern history uh, class. So it started with the unification of Italy in 1861 and it ended with the uh, explicit desire on my hand to show that Italy is a country where um, it is at the crosses of civilization, but also is the uh, sort of uh, uh, land, the point of arrival for many migrants from sub Saharan Africa, from the more than Northern Africa, and from the Middle East. Um, this program was particularly successful because students, I mean, Throughout the semester, my objective was to keep the classes uh, uh, sort of lively and, uh, uh, you know, to keep the students engaged, which on a remote, with the remote format became harder and harder. And so uh, I think this specific experience challenged the students and allowed them to uh, not only get a, like a, a better understanding of, uh, of uh, modern life in Italy right now, of the complexity that this, uh, the refugees experience once they arrive in refugee camps throughout the Mediterranean with the objective of arriving to Italy, and, uh, and connected them in a meaningful way with the struggle of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, migrants arriving in Italian land. Thank you so much for that. That was amazing. Um, I've definitely been one of those tourists that just glances over Italy because I've been there a couple of times and I didn't feel immersed in the culture, but I could definitely appreciate it. Um, and I, I will be looking into that because I think it, it sounds really interesting. Uh, I'm just trying to do a very uh, quick presentation. I mean, trying to focus uh, on, first of all, what happened in Italy, 
uh, during this year. Uh, because of course, living in the country, we know what happens, but you guys, most of you guys and girls are from, are from, are from abroad. So uh, maybe some of the details, uh, you know, didn't, didn't arrive in, in the news or anything like that. And then I, I tried to, uh, how can I say, think of how uh, all this pandemic changed Italy under several point of view. Uh, of course, uh, my focus is more on to the business side of things and economics and of course also cultural things. But uh, so I've been trying to think how Italy changed and then how the whole of the COVID pandemic affected the, the whole issue of sustainability, which uh, well, I'll show you, we you know, became kind of uh, prominent in Europe uh, also because of the pandemic. And lastly, I'm just going to mention what happened to our course at FIT in Florence and how we managed to end the semester because the pandemic actually uh, hit right in the middle of the semester. So we had to uh, come out with like new ways of teaching because of the students being uh, sent back to, to America in, uh, in, in March. Now, uh, so the story of COVID, I'm just going to give you some very brief milestones. Uh, we were the very first Western country to report uh, cases of COVID. That happened on the 20th of February, 2020. And then right after that, two weeks after that, on the 9th of March, uh, Italy decided to go to a nationwide lockdown. So basically all the regions, all the cities were in lockdown. We couldn't get out of the house apart from like doing groceries and going running or something like that uh, and all these kind of things. By June 2020, uh, the government called, well, called this phase three of the emergency. The, the actual pandemic seemed to be kind of losing, uh, losing power. So there weren't so many people getting sick. So uh, a lot of relaxation of these uh, lockdown measures came in. Uh, unfortunately, as we know now, in October, we had the second wave. Uh, for, I guess probably we were parting too much over the summer, but uh, the fact is uh, COVID you know, uh, happened again, and this time happened in a you know, much worse way. Uh, after October, we had the third wave, which we are kind of living through the end now. And hopefully by May 2021, uh, because of the vaccines and because of all the measures that have been taking place of RISTA, uh, we hope to see, a, you know, return to normality. But I would like to focus on the thing that uh, on the 20th of February, 2020, uh, we were the first Western country uh, that declared that they had some COVID cases. And I remember on the news, this picture. Actually, there was a courtesy of CNN uh, who broadcasted uh, this, this, uh, this map where Italy seems to be spreading pandemic all over the world. And of course, there was pretty much our uh, how can I say reaction to it? What the hell? You know, it's uh, to us nothing at that time was really happening. There were like only two cases, and we were portrayed as like being the country that was spreading the virus all over the place. Uh, in reality, we learned later that COVID has been in the country since November, apparently, of 2019, and all other countries. And uh, at the beginning, it didn't. Again, it maybe didn't seem that serious. Uh, yeah, I mean, people were talking about it. And that was until uh, later in March, uh, after the lockdown measures were put on, that uh, on the news, we started seeing things like that. Now, I don't know if you've seen this picture, it might, might have come out on the news in the States. Uh, these are military, military trucks, as you can see. Uh, this is a picture taken in Bergamo, which is a city uh, up north uh, from Milano, uh, between Switzerland and, and Milano, let's put it this way. Uh, and basically, they were hit pretty hard by, by COVID deaths. And each of those military trucks is uh, filled with coffins. Uh, the hospitals couldn't keep the dead bodies, and they had to, to move them away, and they had to call in the military to do that, because there were so many. And that's when the country was kind of like, you know, thunderstruck by this thing. It was real, you know, now it was something that, uh, you know, you could see in the news like that, and it was kind of shocking. And, of course, uh, th that is my memory, of, at least, of, uh, of COVID during March and April, seeing these pictures. And that's the bad note. There's a positive note, and that has to do with culture in Italy. And you probably have seen things like that, too. 
uh, which are Italian sing singing from balconies. Now, uh, despite the situation being pretty bad because people were dying and of course the pandemic thing was all new, we didn't know how to deal with it. Um, at the beginning, I think it was in Rome, maybe I forgot what is the, what was the city, but some people decided to have a sort of flash mob where they were singing and, uh, and playing instruments from the balconies. And soon after all through Italy, in all the cities, we had this, uh, these events coming out, you know, uh, spontaneously. I guess that is pictures a bit the character of Italians in, you know, in face of adversity, we try to find something, you know, to rejoice and have a connection because the thing that uh, you know COVID took away in a massive way is the is the human connection is what well, we'll see later I'll talk a bit about it but it's uh, something that for us Italians is very very important now in terms of travel uh, of course COVID has done a lot of, uh, of bad things and uh, now I'm going to show you these three pictures these are three uh, cities uh, here on you know the top left corner is Roma. Uh, this is Piazza di Spagna, and you see it before COVID and after COVID. Then you have Venice, uh, Piazza San Marco, again before and after. And then of course that is my hometown, is underneath is Florence. You have Piazza del Duomo and Ponte Vecchio. And as you can see, the places are dead empty. And in Florence, walking in the center, uh, I remember the first months during lockdown. Uh, it was also almost kind of nice in a way because you didn't see so many people. But now after one year, it's terrible. Honestly, it's awful. I mean, uh, we made us think how much we actually love the tourists, how much we like to share our culture with people that come in and, and, and see the place. And, uh, you know, as Eric was mentioning, you know, it's not just about pizza and pasta. I mean, there's a lot more that goes on in Italy, but you have to come to Italy to experience it. And uh, and seeing the cities so empty, it's not nice anymore, at least after one year and, you know, a couple of months that this pandemic started. So now, how did Italy change? I'm going to take the Sergio Leone movie, The, the Good, The Ugly and The Bad, to, to help me out with that. And we start with The Ugly, and The Ugly is the things that we cannot change. They happened and they're gone. And the three that my opinion, uh, more important than that, that I singled out, uh, one of all, the first one of all is the death toll, of course, people died. As of today, we have 113,000 people dead. Uh, the people who died are mostly elderly people. Now, uh, you have to know that in Italy, uh, we, I think, we are the second uh, country in the world for uh, average age, the first being Japan. So we have a lot of elderly people. And normally, uh, we found out because of the pandemic that uh, we are one of the countries where the elderly actually live together with the sons and daughters. And uh, so on top of maybe having your, your dad or your mom that, that passes away because of COVID, which is already a tragedy, you have somebody who used to live in your house, which is a double tragedy. And the third bit is a bit economical, and you forgive me for the uh, you know, coldness of the numbers, but um, all these elderly people, of course, they, they have pensions and uh, they normally contribute to the well-being of the family, of course. So they contribute to the uh, economic management of the families. And, and some families didn't recover uh, since 2008, uh, since the, the past uh, economic crisis, and they were relying on that income too. So it's, uh, as you can see, this, this, the, the disease is killing the, you know, uh, members of societies that are very, very, very important to us. The last bit is about healthcare. Because COVID gets the focus, uh, all the non-life-threatening and non-important screenings have been stopped. And uh, this is something that is pretty bad, in my opinion, because we will foot that bill maybe in a couple of years. Uh, you know that if you catch a disease maybe early, uh, you can you know, get cured very easily, but if you get in maybe in later stages, you know, it's not that easy. And uh, and that is something that, unfortunately, our health system has been put so much under stress and that cannot guarantee the normal running of the business to everybody. The bed is something that I hope that maybe you can change. Now, as I mentioned before, we are a culture where uh, hugging, kissing, touching, it's, uh, it's key. You know, even like the waving your hands and everything like that. This is how we are. 
and, and COVID took it all away. And uh, despite the fact that now we're used to it, it's not so much of a problem anymore. At the beginning, it was really, really awkward not to be able to shake hands or to, you know, maybe hug a friend or kiss on the cheek or something like that. And as I say, it is bad, but it's something that I hope maybe, you know, after COVID, it can come back. Economy, as I mentioned before, I showed you the picture. Tourism and restaurants have been hit pretty hard. Uh, we don't know uh, if everybody will be able to uh, restart the business after uh, this pandemic. The state is, is subsidizing the, the businesses now, but uh, of course, you know, uh, we'll need to see how the pickup of tourism will, will happen later. And of course, unemployment is on the rise. But again, this is bad now and hopefully can get better later. And then the difference between corporations and small and medium businesses has, has been uh, increased in favor of the corporations, of course, because they were quicker to, to act, they have more money, and uh, SMBs, they maybe weren't as quick as the others to uh, adapt to the new changes. But the reality is that the economic uh, tissue of Italy is actually made of SMBs. It's not made by corporations. We don't really have a lot of corporations, like maybe in the States or in Japan or in China, or whatever. So um, this, you know, is something that is not that great. But hopefully, uh, the SMBs will be able to re recover the lost ground you know, after the pandemic uh, is over. Now let's talk also about the good things because there were some good things. One of the things is that. Um, well, I'm not talking about the, the younger generations. The younger generation, when I talk about here the culture, uh, they already embrace technology, they know how to use it. I'm talking about you know uh, you know older generations. They never really didn't use technology all that much, but they were forced to. So we we were forced to to use uh, Skype or Google Meet or whatever to to connect with our relatives, uh, even if they live in the same city. Uh, because all the major uh, festivities, Christmas and Easter, for example, they were on lockdown, so you couldn't go and see your, your relatives. So you can only choose uh, one set of relatives to, to go and, and meet. So um, that forced us to uh, update our skills in terms of, you know, of technology, which is, in my opinion, something that is very, very good. It happened to me to have an aperitif at home with my friends, and something that I would have never thought about before, but we did it and we drank some, you know, some, some wine and we could chat like we, we would have done if we were at the pub. Um, the economy is actually, it's been hit pretty hard on one side, but on the other side, again, the pandemic forced companies to try to find different ways of connecting with their own, with the, with the, uh, clients. Now, as it happens, I, Kind of found it out uh, watching my wife because she, she's the perfect model uh, in terms of like uh, stores wanting to connect with her because she's a good shopper. And uh, she was amazed by the fact that now she gets a lot of messages from the stores in the center of Florence through WhatsApp. Now, maybe in the States that is something that is like last century, but for Italy, it's new. It's totally new. And I was talking to a lot of my colleagues from you know, the retail world, and they say that they had to update uh, the store manager's skills in order for them to use uh, Instagram and WhatsApp and all these kind of things. It's very, very important because they never thought about it and they're going to do it now. That's great. And then, of course, there's all the investment on uh, ESG, on, on the uh, eco-friendly and sustainable um, sustainable practices which the pandemic brought on one side because by doing that you can also maybe save some money which is good but on the other side is because uh, we realize that things have to change and that they have to change not just by talking about it but also by by doing now uh on the sustainability i've called this but it's sustainability of course uh got only one very quick slide um it's about the fashion industry, to be honest with you, has been active in, on sustainable practices since a long time. Uh, the problem was that, uh, and by fashion industry, I mean the people who are producing textiles, who are cutting sewing in Italy, who are producing leather, they've been doing it since early 2000s. But at that time, it wasn't an issue that the consumers actually felt it was very important and the brands didn't 
want to spend more money or didn't want to engage in those, into those things. Now the market has changed radically. So now we see the brands are adopting this massively. If you think about caring, for example, okay, that's not an Italian brand. It is not an Italian company, it's French, but the major brand is Gucci. Uh, they made it last year in the corporate nights, uh, top 100 list, which is one of the most important, uh, classification or lists to be on for ESG. Uh, practices and investment, they made it to the top 10. They are the first luxury group to make it to the top 10. They, before, by like three or four years ago, they didn't even make a hundred. So that means that they are stepping on in this kind of investment because it's becoming more and more important. As I said, the production side, uh, textile, fabric, leather, they were already doing that. And they are increasing the investment under that point of view. And all the producers I speak to, uh, now they have new incredible materials that save a lot of water while in producing or uh, they have a lot of other properties that uh, certainly are, are going to be good for, uh, for for sustainability for the world in general and also you know in terms of performance the other important thing is that the eu is investing massively uh, on sustainable practices if the countries want to get money they have to spend it for sustainable projects and the last bit is focus on scope. As fashion business uh, students in the future, well, students, professionals in the future, it's now clear that you had to cross swords with uh, the whole ESG aspects of companies. When I started working in 1999, it wasn't a thing. I liked it because of me. But now it's key. It's something that the students in the future will have to focus on because uh, it's going to be a major uh, issue forever, hopefully. Now, last but not least, what happened to us during the term? As I mentioned, uh, halfway through the term, we had our students uh, sent back to the States. Before that, uh, on the 20th of February, I rem we, we had the two cases reported in Italy, and we were with the students uh, during one of our field trips. Now, in our program in Italy, uh, we try to get the students to experience Italy as much as possible. So we try to uh, go on, on industry visits, uh, visits for, the, you know, of course, having anything has to be related to, to fashion. We go to the Fashion Week in Milano, and we were in Milano for Fashion Week. The problem was that uh, they, would think they were talking about closing down Milano. And if we were there, we would have to stay there. Of course, we don't live in Milano. We live in Florence, which is about 300 kilometers away. So I remember that day because uh, we just arrived in Milano and then we had to reschedule all the buses and, you know, the, the, uh, the office in Florence did a beautiful job because we managed to do it. And then we actually technically escaped Milano at six o'clock in the morning uh, with a bus. And then I think after a week, it was closed down. Uh, so the, there was a risk of being stuck in Milano, which wouldn't have been very pleasant. But what happened after this, that of course the students were sent back to America and in uh, two weeks, we had to uh, basically change our, our teaching courses online. And uh, of course, we, we had to, to do this in, in two weeks because those were the two weeks of quarantine that the students were staying in the States. Uh, and there was this, this little break that allowed us to actually move all the courses online. That meant that we had to learn a lot of new skills uh, also because the level of uh, technology savviness, let's put it this way, uh, technological skills weren't, uh, weren't equal among all the professors. So we helped each other, we managed to, to get this thing done, and eventually we managed to get the course, all the courses to, uh, to the end uh, of the semester and have our, our uh, test and everything. And unfortunately, the visits, of course, had to be canceled, but uh, we, uh, we did interviews with the owners of the companies, we did other things that you know brought them closer a little bit although now there was a notion in the middle and the good thing of course is that those skills are with us forever now so we can you know use them for uh, a better uh, you know for, for better courses in the future all right thank you very much hi everybody thanks to be here and uh, thanks to invite us uh, today and um, I'm Silvio Betterelli. I teach uh, fashion design here in Milano, uh, Politecnico, for the uh, Fit in Milan program. And uh, yeah, 
what we can say uh, the topics one of the topics was uh, how to teach and uh, how to be creative in this um, specific period of time so what happened as lorenzo just said is that um, um, I, i'm in, here in milano and uh, my students uh, actually disappeared they, they had to escape from uh, from milano so they have to go back to new york and uh, and uh, uh, we actually start to work online so it was the first time especially for for everyone for everybody so it was the first time and uh, Mm, we were a bit uh, worried and uh, stressed and uh, you know uh, the then i start uh, to teach online also with my italian group here in milano and uh, i found uh, that the student uh, they were uh, yeah they were very stressed and they were um, uh, let's say they didn't really really understood what, what was going on so uh the first things i, I had to say to my student was uh, um hey guys uh, we study as we usually do here in milano no with our students from new york uh we are creative no we are studying uh, uh to to become a creative uh, professional designer so we have to um, uh, to to show um, to especially to our family that we we still believe in our dreams that we we believe in what we usually do so nothing has to to change i mean we are safe we are lucky we are at home and uh, most of them they were back at home in their family's house that most of them they left many years before so uh, when i saw them in their bedrooms with the the, the puppets or from where they were younger and or the poster of the the, the rock star that they liked, you know, I realized mm, that we had to find a way to 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 create something and um, to find the way to 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 go on dreaming and uh, and uh, to to try to imagine how we can uh, create something beautiful and um, and also the first thing. The first thing I say is, um, guys, have a look that for the first time in the history, we are all, all at the same level. If you're a student uh, coming from um, New York or from Paris or from the Bunka College in Tokyo or from Milano, it doesn't matter. Now, it doesn't matter which is the most uh, cool school. Now we are all at the same level working from our uh, bedroom and uh, with uh, the opportunity of show who we are and how creative we can be in this moment so uh, we cannot travel uh, the spring outside is blossoming so uh, but we cannot live uh, we cannot experience this moment so let's invent a new way to um, to to do everything we are not allowed to do in uh, in this moment so i ask to my student to as we usually do to dream to be curious and to try to travel from the monitor uh, because uh, we had also a very uh, big opportunity because for the first time we can we can travel being at home but it's a matter of how you travel how curious you are so um, i would like to show you uh, some of the project we did because uh, i i believe they are very strong and they are very unique because of the all the things uh, uh, we were missing they were into into the project that we did so let me sorry ah the first thing it's uh, how we can start a project from what we have, from what it surrounds us, no? For example, I'm here now in my studio and I collect uh, masks, no? So I say, guys, 
I start my first lesson like this. I wear my mask. I say, hey guys, do you know what is this? Do you know who is this mask? And um, do you know how we can uh, start a trip, a travel um, with a mask, for example? Because, of course, it's not the first time in the history that uh, a virus uh, can give so many problems. So that's my first lesson. Huh? Can you see how we start? And this was only the way from which we could start travel because, uh, yeah, uh, the, 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 the doctor of the piste was from Venice. So we could start to, to, to study what happened also in the past. And uh, at the same time, we got the opportunity to travel to Venice to study what happened with artists, no? And uh, everything was uh, Venice at that time. So every one of these uh, uh, windows is uh, the beginning of a, of a trip in somehow. That was the idea uh, in, in my, my courses, trying to convince the student that we could study learning and, uh, and that we could move even if we were not allowed to do it. So that was how I start. Then uh, there was another time in the history was the moment of the Hispaniola that uh, in somehow it's very close to uh, what we are living now, no? So we made some research and we discover some um, things. And for example, they could uh, play sports, but again with the masks and the artists were involved, of course, in, in, in every part of the life, no? We see here Schiele that was um, a monk. Uh, Schiele died during the Spagnola. And uh, we, we discovered that uh, it wasn't so different. It wasn't so far from how we are living now. Uh, have a look at uh, this cut, no? How many of this kind of uh, funny picture we, we are watching also today, no? And then I ask to the student to watch what's going on in the world. We have uh, the web, not the net, so we can, uh, we can travel it somehow. And we know that something strange was going on, no? How many of these, uh, of these things we were watching every day? And it was in somehow very inspiring because uh, it's, uh, have a look at the puppet as the cut before. Everything was uh, in somehow also interesting. And as uh, we are creative, we have to make other people dream uh, through us, no? So that was the, have a look at the, the pissed doctor from Venice again. So that was the idea. And we discover then artists were doing the same research as we were doing at the same time. So, and we also discover that from the last, uh, uh, last season fashion show, that also the fashion designer were doing the same kind of research. Those are the last fashion show from Tom Brown, Miu Miu, Rick Owens, is the last for winter. So, then we discover also that uh, some artists were doing exactly what uh, they need to do. And it was the same that we needed at that time, no? And also now. Basically, uh, Damien Hirst was painting the spring, no? So it was uh, very interesting for us to discover that at the same time of the beginning of the pandemia, Damien Hirst was doing this research, this crazy research of colors being at home in his own studio as we were at the same time, no? So everything, it was the beginning of the research we did. Then also another very important artist, David Ockney was painting from Normandia uh, with his iPad, the spring, uh, in a very naive way. And it was very beautiful for us to discover 
that, that we have the same need as uh, the artists we are talking about. And then uh, we start to try to understand, okay, we miss travel and uh, let's imagine how you can travel being at home. And then I ask to my students, for example, this one is uh, Matteo, uh, that he did this uh, project about traveling, but uh, the maps of traveling, studying all the artists, and we discovered that at the same time that we were at home, the ships in the sea, they were working, but also shipments from a plane, they were traveling. So the world was uh, uh, stopped, but uh, something was still going on. Or for example, we call our friend, our parents, and then we could map how our conversation were traveling around Italy, for example. And then we, we create maps. Then we, we start to dream and to make research. And then we start to study uh, everything about the maps. Because, uh, you know, if you, are, if you travel, the maps is uh, the instrument that, that you have to use, that you have to have. So, and then we discover also some women from the past that they were pioneering in, in traveling, no? And then we did, everything was about um, the history research of important person that were traveling in the history. And then we start to create our project, which is basically a dream, a dream of traveling. But then what else? Then we also miss, as Lorenzo was, was saying, to touch people, to ask someone, because uh, most, most of the students, they were alone. So I asked them, okay, what do you need? What you miss most? And uh, they say, we miss our family, our part. We miss the idea of protecting and be protected. So they start to, to collect everything where the memories of their families, no? So, uh, and they study what happened in the art, in the history again, no? And uh, what about uh, every kind of mask protection using our hand, no? How we can protect ourselves by the hand. And then, you know, we start to, to dream a collection of hugs, basically. So that was uh, part of the process. And um, um, it doesn't matter if they are beautiful or not. The project are very deeply into the need of the of the people and uh, we we liked a lot because they were very very interesting uh, research as you can see and then for example what we say we miss the spring uh, which is outside that we are inside so maybe um for example i have this student that she was very inspired by the, the, the period of time of the impressionism where the artists for the first time of the history they went outside of their studios to, to find to, to watch the nature the season and the light and the colors but she was at home and basically as lorenzo says she was uh, from bergamo and uh, you cannot imagine you know bergamo is just nearby milano this one is the, uh, the church from where every 10 minutes the bell was ringing. And it was uh, like this because uh, I asked uh, Julia what happened there. And she said the bell is, is ringing every 10 minutes because of people are dying. I said, oh my God, you know. Uh, I, I said, Julia, I can see some flower from your terrace. As you are not allowed to go outside, maybe we can start from the flower. We can try to let the, the, the flower, the spring be into our places, no? Let's dream uh, that the nature is inside instead of be outside. And also we are now watching outside from the, the, the fabric, the, the, the things that we have at home, also from our past, no? And then we see some, a, a few people around that they are going to shop something, to buy something and stuff like that. And then we start to, to, to take all the 
the things we had uh, to create uh, with colors, with different things. The, the idea of uh, our spring, the spring that we are not allowed to, to live. And then uh, we start to wear, to dress up with the flower. Uh, all the collection you, you, you see is the collection made from the flower from her small terrace. And I think it's very colorful, it's full of passion. It's full of the thing that she missed. So, um, and it was amazing for me to, to work uh, with them. And uh, also for the first time as a teacher, I, I understood how much important is the relation, is the human relation. Because we, we understood that we, we need to be doctor, psychologist, friend. We need to be so many times, so many things at the same time. Here, for example, there's another student who starts to study her family for the first time. She didn't even know how many uncles uh, she had, uh, how many people were, uh, you know, uh, the family trees. And uh, she starts to play with the memories, with the postcards. And uh, she uh, finally discovered where she was coming from, you know? so. That's something that uh, basically happened for the first time. At the same time, in the other, when uh, they found me, they were young, in the other part of the world, um, some artists, as um, the, they were working, they were producing a very important things. So she worked and she decided to make their family uh, becoming um, in somehow special a piece of art so tamara yeah tamara delempicca was part of the inspiration and uh, she pretended to have her uncle painting the same things as tamara did because it was in the same period of time so that's only part of the research we did and it was very inspiring and then what we discover is that this season all the design, a very important design, they had the same, <laughs> they need to go out from the white box and they need to, to, to let the, the, the collection travel to make other people dream. So the fall winter, basically, uh, this season was everything, was most of the, of the collection were outside. So we saw Antonio Maras in the beautiful Sardinia from where I come from, then, uh, Balmain, which show also the idea of travel, no? And also in the space, uh, he, his, uh, he dream uh, to travel. And then the sport, we were not allowed to do outside, uh, sport outside, so. And then uh, uh, Celine, which uh, also imagined such a beautiful um, location, or Asemiyake, no? Then uh, what happened is that also the we discovered that the famous design, Miu Miu, was uh, in the moon time, no? Rick Owens was in Venice again, and the, the atmosphere remind in somehow the, 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 the doctor of the peace, as we saw before, and Tom Brown, again, something which comes like a dream. And um, that's what we discovered, that at the end we were no, so far from uh, what also the other important designers were dreaming. That's what we did. That's what we are doing also now. Wow. Camila, <laughs> you go ahead. This was beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah, Thanks. So thing I think um, we have to start wrapping up, but I definitely like I've seen that sense of escapism in a lot of recent collections and um including the, the collaboration with gucci and the north face as well like all of the videos where um the outside and i think um it's a beacon of light for a lot of people that have been really affected by the pandemic so thank you for that that was all really beautiful i i do have a question if i may Silvio. Do, these beautiful works that um you and your students also um created are there um um can they be shared um uh, somehow is there um already visibility for this these were amazing yes yes yes, yes. we will we, we, we want to create a kind of portfolio of uh, um 
of uh, COVID time projects because they are very full of, um, yeah, they're very deep uh, and uh, they're very interesting. And we want to share with other people because uh, it's what I say to my students, uh, it's, a, it's a very difficult period of time, but it's also very important uh, period of time. People will remind and uh, your project are part of the documentation of what is happening basically. So, um, yeah, we will we will create a, a big portfolio. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. I know Erica has to run to another meeting. Uh, this was a beautiful event. Thank you so much. Uh, it featured so many different perspectives. It was so wonderful to, to be able to see and hear about what's happening in Italy right now. The poem was beautiful. Fabulous event. Thank you all very, very much for being here. Thanks to you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. We'll stay in touch. Bye. Bye. Take care, everybody. Goodbye. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Thank you. Bye bye.